So recently, we learned that OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, was earning $80 million per month. This revelation comes on the heels of an intriguing report that claimed that over 80% of Fortune 500 companies, including Canva, SD Louder, Zapier, and PwC, have adopted the chatbot. Now, it looks like the company is set to enjoy even more publicity after reports broke out that its revenue could increase by over 1,000% with the launch of the GPT Enterprise. Join us in today's video as we explore what this truly means for OpenAI and why Microsoft is pushing to receive up to 75% of this staggering profit. OpenAI and its brainchild, ChatGPT, have made giant strides in recent months, causing a significant power shift in the AI industry. The phenomenal chatbot has become some sort of an internet sensation dazzling users with its ability to perform a range of intuitive and non-intuitive tasks based on simple text commands inputted by the users. As expected, the widespread popularity of ChatGPT has brought good fortunes to OpenAI. The startup was valued at between $27 and $29 billion after securing a multi-billion dollar investment from Microsoft in January. As part of the partnership between both companies, Microsoft plans to invest up to $13 billion in OpenAI over the next few years. And as a result, the tech giant will be entitled to 75% of OpenAI's profits until the $13 billion investment is repaid. Currently, OpenAI reportedly earns around $80 million monthly, and after the recent launch of the ChatGPT Enterprise, the company is on track to earn up to $1 billion by 2024. This revenue will be generated from the subscription fee charged in ChatGPT and the sale of API access to the GPT-3 and GPT-4 large language models. Essentially, ChatGPT Enterprise is a new version of the ChatGPT that offers special features like enterprise-grade security and privacy, advanced data analysis capabilities, longer context windows for processing longer inputs, unlimited high-speed GPT-4 access, and multiple customization options, amongst other things. One of the biggest points of criticism for ChatGPT and other AI-powered chatbots was the issue of data privacy, and I'm so excited that OpenAI has finally decided to address it. With ChatGPT Enterprise, users will enjoy greater protection. For instance, in the past, the company collected users' data to train and retrain the model, but that will not be the case with ChatGPT Enterprise. So, any conversation that you have with a chatbot will be private. In addition, the ChatGPT Enterprise is equipped with the Transport Layer Security 1.2 protocol, which secures or encrypts data that is being transferred over a network. It also features the Advanced Encryption Standard, AES, which protects stored data or blocked messages. The AES-256 encryption is believed to be one of the most secure encryption standards today, and is even used by the US government to safeguard classified files. Furthermore, the ChatGPT Enterprise comes with the single sign-on SSO feature. This is an identification method that allows users to authenticate or log into multiple applications and websites with a single credential. Another security feature embedded into the tool is Usage Analytics, which provides a detailed breakdown of the interaction between the user and the chatbot. Additionally, ChatGPT Enterprise is powered by the GPT-4 language model, which expands the context window to 32,000 tokens. This is roughly 16 times more than the context window capacity of GPT-3. Essentially, the context window of an AI chatbot is the number of tokens a language model can process when generating a response. According to Microsoft, tokens are the basic units of text or code that an LLM AI uses to process and generate language. So in other words, ChatGPT Enterprise will facilitate more significant interaction between humans and chatbots, not to mention its advanced data analysis and customizable features. Beyond the Enterprise version, it's quite amazing to see how fast ChatGPT has grown on us because when it was first released on November 30th, 2022, there was a lot of skepticism from random internet users, top journalists, and even experts. Many of them saw ChatGPT as one of those smart AI chatbots that wouldn't stand the test of time. What are the risks for something like ChatGPT? Well, there's fears that it could start to push people out of jobs that otherwise, uh, you know, they would be able to perform without issue. So think things like uh, writing, for instance, or some kinds of secretarial work. There's fears that ChatGPT, if it continues to develop, could simply take over those. However, it only took a few days to prove them wrong. Within one five days of its release, ChatGPT had reached 1 billion users. And within two and a half months, over 100 million users had registered for the service. In comparison, it took nine months for TikTok to reach 100 million users, while Instagram needed two years and six months to reach this feed. This showed that there was something really, really special about ChatGPT. Like many other users who jumped on the ChatGPT trend in the early days, 
I tried my hands on the tool, and I must say, I was very impressed by the speed and quality of output, especially compared to some other popular AI chatbots. I was able to generate different types of written content, including a love theme poem, letter, and article. Of course, there were a few inconsistencies here and there, and if I really wanted to use this content, I'd have to spend more time editing and polishing them. But like I mentioned earlier, the quality wasn't bad at all, and the chatbot only needs a few seconds to generate any type of content you want. The fact that the service was free made it even more interesting. I mean, most people never thought a tool like this would be possible, and all of a sudden, OpenAI created it and made it available for free. Essentially, I think this was a market strategy on the part of the company to promote early adoption and attract as many of my users as they can, and it absolutely worked. Millions of users adopted the technology quite early, and most of them were happy they did. But what most of them didn't know at the time was that the company was struggling behind the scenes, especially in terms of finance. As of 2022, the losses incurred by OpenAI from the ChatGPT project was around $540 million. In contrast, the company's annual revenue at the time was estimated to just around $28 million. This was quite scary because the deficit between the profits and losses was well over 1,500%. A few years ago, this wouldn't have been a problem. After all, the company itself was originally founded as a nonprofit organization by a group of innovators back in 2015, including Elon Musk, Sam Altman, and Peter Thiel. In fact, at the very beginning, the founders donated around $1 billion to aid the research works at the OpenAI lab. This allowed the startup to function without the distraction of trying to break even or make profits. Since our research is free from financial obligations, we can better focus on a positive human impact, the OpenAI team wrote in a blog post at the time. We believe AI should be an extension of individual human wills and, in the spirit of liberty, as broadly and evenly distributed as is possible safely. But in the long term, this wasn't sustainable, especially after one of the project's biggest investors, Elon Musk, pulled out in 2018. At that point, it became clear that OpenAI needed to change its approach. The honest truth is like, we do have to figure out how to make a return for our investors at some point, and we don't know how we're going to do it. So after reevaluating its business model in 2020, the company decided to adopt a new structure. We learned early on that we were going to need far more capital than we were able to raise as a nonprofit. Our nonprofit is still fully in charge. There is a subsidiary capped profit so that our investors and employees can earn a certain fixed return. And then, beyond that, everything else flows to the nonprofit. And the nonprofit is, like in voting control, lets us make a bunch of non standard decisions. Can cancel equity, can do a whole bunch of other things, can let us merge with another org protects us from making decisions that are not in any like shareholders' interests, so I think as a structure, that has been important to a lot of the decisions we've made. As explained by Sam Altman, the new structure is flexible. To start with it, it features a subsidiary capped profit division that not only allows the company to raise capital, but also guarantee investors and employees a certain fixed return. Perhaps more importantly, this new flexible structure allows OpenAI to maintain some of the characteristics of a nonprofit organization. Despite putting this structure in place, OpenAI still launched ChatGPT for free in December 2022, especially considering the amount of financial investment that went into developing the tool. In fact, a few days after the launch of ChatGPT, Altman reiterated his initial thoughts that the startup would have to monetize ChatGPT at some point because of the eye-watering computing costs. And a few months later, the company launched a new premium subscription plan called ChatGPT Plus. This plan costs $20 monthly and offers quite a number of intuitive benefits like general access to ChatGPT even during peak times, faster response times, priority access to new features and improvements. Interestingly, OpenAI still retained the free plan for non-subscribers who cannot afford the $20 monthly fee and don't mind using the chatbot with the GPT 3.5 language model. But as I mentioned earlier, the premium plan offers much more in terms of features, including unrestricted access to the newly introduced GPT-4 language model. This helped to entice more customers, and with the introduction of the enterprise version, you can imagine that the adoption rate of ChatGPT will soar even higher, which ultimately means that the startup could possibly exceed the $1 billion revenue estimation. If you like this video, check this one out too!